I suppose the most famous story that's brought down in the Gemara, uh, which deals with the uh, destruction of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, is known as Kamsa Bar Kamsa. You may, I think some, some time ago we did cover it. It's always interesting to just review it. So you had these two people there. One fellow is called Kamsa, <coughs> the other fellow is called Bar Kamsa. So these get easy to mix their names up. And so just, that's, what, that's exactly what happened. Uh, and this is the story, which is, which is really what we call Sinat Chinam. What does Sinat Chinam mean? Baseless hatred. I mean, you know, they could have made up somehow. Uh, so but this, then it goes like this. Good morning, Gitten. Uh, it's a page 55 uh, B, the second part of the page. There's a Kamsa about Kamsa Chorub Yushalayim. Due to this uh, dispute between Kamsa Bar Kamsa, the city of Jerusalem is destroyed. It doesn't mean this is the only, the only thing that happened. That's why the city of, of, of Yushalayim was destroyed, the Beit Amish was destroyed. It was one of many. But this is an example of, uh, of what went on. The whole government, a certain person, the Rachamei Kamsa, he had a friend, his good buddy. His good friend, he was, had a good friend called Kamsa, who bowed the Bove, and he had a, an enemy. Could stand another guy, had a similar name, but he was, his name was Bar Kamsa. Okay. Abbasuga, so one time he had some sort of a party, most probably he had some sort of a simcha. Amalishamai. And he said to his servant, Zeal, I say, Lee, Kamsa, go. Oh, Invite my friend Kamsa to this party that I'm making. Okay. But the uh, the servant made a mistake. Ozal, isolate Bar Kamsa. He made an error. And who does he invite? Bar Kamsa, the host's enemy. He can't stand this fellow. Also, and the Bar Kamsa came. Now, the question is like this if Bar Kamsa was this host's enemy, why did he accept the invitation to come? What do you think happened? Any suggestions? Could have been for business reasons. Excuse me, he had what? He could have been for wanted to meet contacts there, or he wanted to humiliate Bar Kamsa. Bar Kamsa is his, his enemy. And he came. Right, so he, maybe he went because he wanted to humiliate him. Who, who wants to humiliate went... too? Who wants to humiliate? Bar Kamsa I wants to humiliate know. the host? Uh, no. No, most probably is what some say. Bar Kamsa was, who was uh, supposedly a, an enemy. So why did he come? Because he was thinking maybe this fellow who's inviting me wants to make up, and I'm willing to make up with him. Yeah, we had our disagreement. He's invited me. Maybe he means that he wants to make up and we could be friends again or at least talk to one another. Okay, but it didn't work out like that. Also, Ashkechei to have a Yosef. Oh, well, came the time of the the, the Uda, whatever it was, a party, whatever, must have been some sort of a simcha. And he sees Bar Kamsa there. The host sees Bar Kamsa. He's his enemy. Omale. And he said to Bar Kamsa, the, the host said to Bar Kamsa, we can't help Barbara about the bubble, the whole Barbara. You know, we, we are enemies. How do you be here? I, I, how, how can you come? My boy is talking. What are you doing over here? Come, book, get up, get out. Kick them out. You want to. Now, you have to realize there were many people there. And this was a great um, embarrassment to this fellow Bar Kamsa. So he's trying to make up and says, Omale, so the Bar Kamsa said to the host, Hovi of Asai, Shafkon, look, I came, just leave me alone. Okay, I'll be on my corner, you say what you want. But I don't want to be embarrassed in front of all the people sitting in this, uh, at this particular function. I'm willing to pay. For all the food and drink that I will have, I'm willing to pay whatever it may be. But the host was not interested in that. 
Oh, so Omale? So yeah. Why did that? Why did why why did why was he invited? It was a mistake. The, the bar, um, um, the host. We don't even know his name. Did you see? I don't give his. This host sent his servant to invite invite his friend Kamsa. It, the servant maybe didn't hear him right, or maybe would, made him a total mistake, and he invited our Kamsa. And that's the, which was his enemy. They had a terrible argument, maybe. But now Bar Kamsa's here. He thought maybe the man wants to make up with me. He's willing to make up. And when the whole saw him, he said, get out of here. You don't belong here. We don't like one another. Is okay. this a madras or is this a true story? This is a, no, no. According to the Gemara, this is a true story. But this is like an example of what we call Sirat Khinam, baseless hatred. That. Baseless hatred. That went on huge line. Well, things like this is not the only thing, but the things like this that, that went on in the city of Yerushalayim, which led up to the base, the, the destruction of the second holy temple. This is a story that took place before the destruction of the second holy temple. So, Excuse me, Rabbi. Excuse yeah. Me. Good evening. Uh, is there any possibility they were related? They were what? Related? Related. Because Bar Kamsa means he's the son of Kamsa, right? Uh, I don't know. I never, I never saw that. But they had similar names, which we can understand why a mistake could happen. Um, I don't know. That I don't know. I never saw that. Okay. Just ask but anyway, <clears throat> the host said nothing to it. Okay? So Bart Comps says, okay, I, I said I'll just pay for what I Originally, I'm just pay for what I eat. I'll do even better than that. Even the law that made Paul good to Sudo Sikh, I'll tell you, I'll pay 50%. I'm paying whatever it costs you, I will pay half of the of the course for this party okay still the host was did not uh, did not agree Omale, love it. oh absolutely not get out so the omale my bar Thompson said listen you have been locked to make cool this with us i'll pay for the whole thing obviously it wasn't a problem of money he was willing to pay for the whole party and not to be embarrassed in front of all those people that uh, that were attending this party omale loan but the host again said, "No, I don't. I don't want you. I don't want anything." And not only that, the Nachtev Yode took hold of him in his hand, took Bar, took Kamsa by his, uh, took hold of Bar Kamsa, took me, stood up, had him stand up, asked him, and threw him out. Oh boy! So this was obviously, if you're Bar Kamsa, and this happened, then with Rasul Lady, there was a lot of distinguished guests at this particular party. And uh, he's terribly embarrassed and he's very upset, which is, I can understand. Okay. But, but he went, but he was so upset that he would turn against his own people. Look what he says. This is what Art Thompson says. You know, at this party, you know, there were distinguished rabbis there. But they said nothing. They just sat there and said nothing. They didn't protest. Okay. Obviously, if they said nothing and they were quiet, they must have agreed. They agreed with what this, uh, what the host did. And that infuriated them. Yeah. Now, that is another question. Why didn't the rabbi say something? What do you think? There must have been more to it. The rabbis see, they must have heard it also. They saw a situation like this happening at the party and they did nothing. Now, why were they quiet? It's a really a big pro a problem. Any any suggestions? Okay. Some want to say that it seems during that period um, there were a lot of things like this, you know, feuding between many people. Like I said, this is just one example of it. And I think the rabbis, according to some commentators, the rabbi felt if they let's assume they got in somewhat involved, what could happen? It's not just the rabbi selling uh, the guest uh, the whole something not to do that, but uh, it might have turned into a, a big fight between all the people. All, all the guests uh, almost take almost take the host side, almost take Bar Kamsa's side, and instead of having uh, just a, a dispute between the host and Bar Kamsa, they'll have a whole party fighting over this. That's what they were afraid of. It, it would just make it even worse. At least that's according to one of the commentators. But really, it, I have a question. It, so, yeah. therefore, when there's something disagreeable going on in society, the rabbi shouldn't. Ex shouldn't. Uh, I, no, I will not say that. 
But I, I think based on what was going on at that period of time, um, uh, that this, as I mentioned when I, when I started, this was like one of many. There were many things like that. There were difference of opinions and they're fighting with one another. Maybe even the rabbis, you soon see later, there were fights between them. Uh, what should be, how do we handle the situation? Like you soon see. Uh, one said this way, one said that way. They, there was, it was a very difficult period. How to relate to the Romans? That was another problem. There was this relationship between one Jew and another Jew, uh, but and there was there was different factions at that time. Everybody had a different opinion, so they didn't want to go ahead and, and make the argument more than it is. Just between them two, those two, uh, you know, they were quiet. But, but you know, it was it was a difficult period. Should we get involved with such a thing or not? Uh, but there were questions but that's like how, that. Well, that happened. That hap that's the story. That's the history of the Jews. If there's Maybe. always a problem, the rabbis always have different opinions. Well, that's okay if you argue, if you could argue agreeably. But if you disagree and you're still going to, uh, but you don't disagree agreeably, it's not going to work. Because well, you're right. If you do have arguments, when you find that in the Gemara, they disagree agreeably. But here was an argument that, it, like I said, it, they were afraid to, to get involved and might, might turn the whole party into two factions. One will agree with Bar Kamsa, will not agree with Bar Kamsa. So it's a, it was a difficult period. Uh, yeah, maybe. It, 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 it was a terrible thing because look what's going to happen. And you can understand it too. This fellow Bar Kamsa was thrown out. He is infuriated and he's upset that rabbis did not get involved. And look at what he says. <clears throat> Azel, because of this, Azel, Echel, Bekursa. You know what? I'm going to, since they did that to me, I'm going to cause them trouble. I'm going to go to the Roman authorities and I'm going to tell them what happened, which is also not good either. Only he made it worse. But he was really infuriated. Oh, it wants Big Mouth wanted to go to the authorities of the, I suppose, the, this, of, of the, of the Romans to tell them what happened. Ozal, he came to the to Rome or he spoke to the Roman authorities, normally the case, uh, maybe it must have been uh, a place either where the Caesar was there or had representatives that that uh, were close to Caesar to make uh, decisions. What is what does he tell Rome or the Roman authorities that were in that area? More to walk you, but you know some I want to tell you the Jews are going to rebel against you. Yeah, Omalei Miyema. How do you know that? How do you know they're going to rebel against us? And so so far, it's been pretty quiet, I suppose. Maybe at that time, who said they're going to do this? Omalei, I'll tell you. I'll prove it to you. Shadali Kurbana sent a sacrifice to be offered in the holy temple. Now, the thing is like this: Are we allowed to accept sacrifices from a non-Jew? Can a Rome can Roman send a sacrifice? Say slaughter this or sacrifice this animal to your God. Uh, is that acceptable? What do you think? The animal had a blemish. Well, I actually know the story, but I've no, but I'm asking if it yes. had a blemish. You could. Yes. It was yes, acceptable. It's acceptable. It was we, a non-Jew can go ahead and offer a sacrifice. Okay. So this fellow said I I'll show you the rebelling against you because you just send a sacrifice. Okay. And they did. A causes in Corbinle, go see if they're going to offer the sacrifice or not. Okay, so Rome agreed, you know, okay, we're going to send a nice sacrifice. Ozal, Shodabi, or the Egg of Tilsa. And really, they sent a very good sacrifice. Some say it was a three year old calf. And it was a, a very good looking calf. And that, according to their knowledge, there was no blemish, it was perfect. However, this part comes is so angry. He's going to make, he's going to put a blemish into the sandwich. While he was taken, while the spark comes taking this animal uh, to the baked meat to be offered as a sacrifice, he made a blemish on it. What was this blemish? Beneath uh, Sivasayim. He put the blemish in the lip, made a cut in the lip of the animal. Now, uh, or I'm related to talking to you know, some say he some sort of a blemish in the eye. Now, 
Duchtan Nidan, Havi Muma, Ritu, Love Muma. But uh, they, they, from, the, from the Roman Romans' point of view, when they had a sacrifice to the gods, if it had a little cut in the lip or some sl slight blemish in the eye, that was acceptable by them. We will not accept that the holy, the holy, in the Holy Temple. That was considered a blemish and disqualified the animal from being sacrificed. So he was a smart, this guy, Bart Thompson, knew that. So he made a blemish that for the, in, on, in, on the animal, that for Rome, it's not considered a blemish, but the Beit Hamidrash would consider it a blemish. Okay. So now they come to the Holy Temple. And they call him look at it. And there was a also a, a court, there was also a bait in a court in the holy temple for any questions that the coin had pertaining to themselves, what disqualify a coin, or what disqualifies an animal. So, so and it was again a, dis, a disagreement at what should be done. Remember, we're dealing here with the Roman Empire, we're not dealing here with a, another Jew. So a lot of the Rabbana said, listen, maybe we should overlook this. And sacrifice it. Why? Bishum Shlom Malchus. Look, if we're not going to sacrifice it, who knows what's going to happen? Let's keep peace. You have enough problems with the Roman. Could you imagine if you don't take the the uh, the, the the sacrifice from the uh, from the Romans? Maybe you're very angry at that. Who knows what they'll do? That was one one group of people said it. Some there was the, the head of the court. Only Rabbi Zechariah ben Afkus was. Rabbi Zechariah ben said, "No, Yom, you should not do. It. We should not. If we're going to permit this animal to be sacrificed with this blemish, Yom Ru, Shabali Moon, Grave, the Gavi Hamis Big. You know what people? So it's going to go around. You know what they did in the Holy Temple? They opened an animal that had a blemish. They're going to forget the part that it was a Roman. They're going to go ahead and say, look, you're allowed to offer a sacrifice with a blemish in it. That's not going to be good." Of misunderstand what's going on. At least that was according to Rabbi Zechariah. Okay. But so, uh, so, so it was according to Rabbi Zechariah, he rejected that. Rejected it, we cannot offer such an animal. But then another suggestion was offered. So, well, I'll tell you what. It's, okay, we don't, let, since we're afraid that the Romans will find out, how are they going to find, how are they gonna find out? Most probably this guy Bar Kamsa will go ahead back to the Romans and sit on us. He said, you know, they didn't accept your sacrifice. And I tell the Romans, you see, I was right. They want to rebel against you. So they thought, well, if that's the case, so maybe we should just kill this Bar Kamsa to save the lives. Save, you know, the Romans, maybe he is, maybe it's, it is correct. Maybe they'll be angry and they'll, who knows, the communities might be destroyed because of this. So, so they, the thought was, let's kill this, let's kill Bar Kamsa. The Lolaim and Lazel said, not snitch on us. Said they will never find out. They'll think they'll be offered it. No? But James Zarab, Rabbi Zachariah, and said a different thing. Why, the couldn't, they, why, why oh. couldn't they have said that we appreciate this, the, the, the gesture, but we're not allowed to have a blemished animal? Or well, it could be, since according to Rome was the fact considered a blemish, they might not believe that, that excuse. Like we said before, more points it out. The Romans would not consider a little cut in the lip or in the eye as a blemish. So they will interpret it as a, the Jews are rebelling against us. Look, we sent a nice animal there, and they know they're refusing to, uh, to sacrifice it. They're not going to accept the idea, well, that's a blemish. To them, that wasn't the blemish. That Mark but they really already points knew that out. Was crazy, so why couldn't they have this crazy idea, too? Uh, again, what you, uh, I don't hear what you said. Uh, you they, just... they already knew that the, they didn't think their sacrifices were the same as the Jews' sacrifices. Uh, it, true, but um, they, they, at least according to their opinion, the way, look, the way they look at it, a, a cut in the lip or in the eye was not Considered a blemish, and then were, maybe they weren't that interested that maybe the Jews consider that a blemish. To them, it was a perfectly good sacrifice. But Rabbi Zachariah was concerned that if if we do it, people are going to think that we are allowed to offer blemished animals as a sacrifice. And, I don't understand why they couldn't say this. We're not allowed to do this. We appreciate it. Yeah, I know, but the, I, I think if, as a Roman, a, with a Roman thought. If they would hear that, that's, a, that's nonsense. We don't accept that. 
They must not want to offer our sacrifice, and they would create problems. They're not. Maybe they went. Out, they went accept. The Rambam more is clear on that. They didn't accept that to be a blemish. We we'll cut on the lip or on the eye. That's not a blemish by them. And if they and if they're told that, they'll say that's an excuse. We don't accept it. Most probably because uh, because he, 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 even the, the Rabbi Zechariah was afraid of that. Even though our people also would go ahead and think that a blemished animal can be offered, and that's not that's not the halacha. And so th that was a problem. You, you have to understand. It was difficult times. The Romans were in control. What do you do? It was a dilemma. What do you do? It's a, the by blemish, they knew. Look, even the Beit Hamikdash, they knew that the Romans did not consider it a blemish, but they consider they considered it a blemish. What do you do to offer it? Uh, then people will say, "Oh, you see, you're allowed to offer blemished animals." Word gets around, uh, and then now the suggestion was, "Let's kill the guy." So, well, how do they guy. explain it by accepting the animal with a blemish? Is pekuaf nefesh? I don't know. Oh, well, good point. Yeah, but uh, um, I Otherwise, think how Rabbi Zacharia. How they accept it? They I want you to know, at the end, not everybody, although they listened to Rabbi Zacharia, but not because he was like the head of the court and they wanted to contradict him. I'm sure there were those who said do it, but he overruled it. He he was concerned about what, people, what our people would say. If word gets around that a blemished animal is offered, they're going to say, oh, you see, you're allowed to offer a blemished animal. And Rabbi Zacharia was worried about that. He doesn't want people to be misled. That was his, he was, he was, some people, at the end, you'll see the Gemara was was, uh, was was not so certain with Rabbi Zechariah did the right thing because you're right. Maybe the Kuch Nevesh, maybe not that to overrule, overlook it, and we'll, maybe it, it will explain to them what the whole, pro, whole problem was. But yet Rabbi Zechariah was very very concerned about that because even now they want their second suggestion was kill this fellow. Our Kamsu would not be able to go back and tell him. And it would be okay. No one's going to say anything. We keep our big mouth shut. And the and the, um, the Romans could think that we offered it. But Rabbi Zechariah did not Why like that. Why couldn't they say it was Kilo Hashem and they couldn't do it? I, I don't know. Kilo Hashem. That's where he got that. Yeah, I don't, again, I don't know if the Romans would accept that. I think Romans, from their point of view, is a perfectly good. No, animal. if the Jews said it was Kilo <laughs> Hashem, then then it is what it is. It's no longer in their hands. If they I mean, wouldn't be able like, to offer it. It's, it's like in, during the Inquisition, the Jews couldn't convert. They had a, you know. Yeah, the the, the Moranos. So yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know, but it seems the uh, Gemara doesn't go all the detail, out, but uh, based on what Rabbi Zachary is saying. I think he was, he knew the other argument too, that what the, he was afraid about the Romans, but also he was afraid about his own people. He didn't want anybody to say that they're offering a blemished animal. And they certainly, but there's not a second suggestion, killing the person, killing uh, Bakamsa. Uh, so he wouldn't go back and tell the Romans. So he doesn't like that either. What are people going to think? That a person brings a blemished animal, he gets killed. Then that's what he says. So it, it, it was a difficult decision. And Gemara does criticize Rabbi Zechariah and says that he was one of the causes for the Holy Temple, the destruction of the Holy Temple. Not the only cause, but he was involved in that. They felt he did wrong. It appears from the ending of the Gemara that they didn't like what Rabbi Zechariah did in, in, in retrospect. But look, let's learn the Gemara further. So there was a thought. The second thought was, let's kill Bar Kamsa. He wouldn't, be, he wouldn't go back. And the, and the Romans would think that it was awful. So he said, uh, I said, no, I don't want that either. People will go ahead and say that if you have a blemished animal or for a, a person purposely put a blemish on the animal, that he gets killed. But that's not the halacha. The ruling is you can't offer it as a sacrifice, but we don't kill a person if he, if he wanted to bring a blemished animal to the holy temple. People will be misled. They would, they're going to think wrongly and say that we kill people if they bring a blemished animal. You can't do that either. So uh, it was back and forth, and Rabbi Zechariah overruled both. And remember, so Rabbi Zechariah was the head of the court at that time. Now we get, you know, uh, the Gemara is going to, uh, you'll soon say at the end, but the Gemara is the next comment will say that it appears that the, the, uh, the sages felt that Rabbi Zechariah did wrong. Because look what it said over here. 
because of what Rabbi Zechariah and Akulas did, he, he did not offer it, uh, the, uh, an animal. Maybe he could have done that. He said, well, we over just you make an exception to the rule, even if it has a blemish. He refused the the the, uh, the other opinion of maybe we should kill about Barkov, yeah, Barkov, uh, what's his name, about uh, Bar Kamsa. Because, so he wouldn't go back on stitching. People he felt uh, people will think that you you you're, you're, you you put someone to death, you put someone to death if he offered a uh, a blemished animal. That's not true either. So the Morris does say the course of Rabbi Zechariah ben Akul is echariva eisenu besarpes echaleinu. Did they do blame him to a certain degree because he 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 refused. To do uh, to, to offer a blemished animal and refuse to kill kill Bar Kokhba, Bar Kamsa, Echariva Espeseno. This is one of the causes. I don't say it's the only cause. Our house, the Beit Hamikdash, was destroyed. The Sarfoa Echaleno, the sanctuary was burnt. Bikilizanu Mayor Senu, and because of this, our we were exiled from our land. So you see, from what the Gemara concludes after this little incident, that the, it doesn't appear that they. That our sages, when they, in retrospect, when we look back on it, they didn't really agree with Rabbi Zechariah. They think he, that was a, a major cause for the destruction. Because eventually, most probably, they found out, the Romans found out that it wasn't awful. And uh, that that was an insult. They sent a perfectly good animal. They didn't know that Bakamsa put a, 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 a blemish on the animal. So, uh, we, I, you know, it's just one of those things. Did Rabbi Zechariah and Akulis did right and not according to the Gemara? They felt that he did wrongly. He should have offered it and overlooked it. But, you know, I'm sure maybe it's up for a debate whether he did right or wrong. Okay. Uh, now let's have a look further. Uh. After this uh, particular incident, um, it's a bit. Okay. Um, Vespasian, yeah. Well, after this whole thing, eventually, Vespasian, uh, the Roman Vespasian, came to, uh, to, to be the ruler of Israel at that time. Um, also, the Tzorah Leitlashene. And he besieged the city for three years. Uh, at that time, there were three very wealthy uh, individuals living in, in Jewish Lion. These were their names. Nakdima ben Gurion, Uben Kalabas Sabua, Uben Tzitzis Kakesis. I want to explain why they call these names Nakdima ben Gurion, I think we had the incident one time. I I quoted it to you. It had to do with with the um, with water and uh, and if the, and they borrowed some they, they borrowed some water from the Romans. And Nakdima ben Gurion said he will pay back in a particular in a particular amount of time. And a miracle happened at the end. It was like, it was the end of the time. Then it was night coming, and there was a miracle happened that the sun stayed a little longer than usual. And the rain came, and he was able to pay back for all pay the water back. Okay, so anyway, that was not in And there's another fellow named Kalba Savua, who was Kalba Savua, who was his famous son-in-law. Rabbi Akiva. Very good, Kalba Savua. Uh, uh, that was really not his name, but I don't know what his name is. But uh, he had a nickname, Kalba. Kalba was Kelev. To call a Nicholas a basic to Kelev. If anybody entered his house, he was hungry like a dog. <laughs> but he was satiated, satisfied after he left. Also extremely wealthy man. And then there's another fellow, Francis uh, Hakesis. Notice what Sitsis. She called Negro Algave He used to wear beautiful garments and he had Sitsis on his the four on the four corners. And uh, he used to sit among the Romans when, when they were, it was like a representative originally among the, the Romans. Okay. 
and it says that uh, Rome, you have to have a seat, maybe uh, representing the Jewish community uh, in Rome. Okay, now it wasn't. Now the, the, city, the city has been seized uh, by the Romans, the city of Jerusalem, um, under, under the rule of Vespasian. But these three people could were able to sustain the whole population of, of Yushalayim with what they have with them. Uh, and uh, let's see what they, each one had, had a lot of a, a particular commodity. Karamalu, one of the three said the following, I have enough storage houses of wheat and barley. I can sustain the people with, for many years with wheat and barley. And one said, well, you know, I'm very wealthy when it comes to kamra, wine, with the milk, and salt, and oil. I got enough to supply everybody. Okay. And the third one says, I have plenty of wood and lumber, firewood. I could, and, and you know, I could sustain the people for many years. Yeah. One will tell you how many years. Shabkura Bona and Siva, their brother said, of the most, the thing that was most expensive was the one who had all this wood. Why? Um, it seems seem that that was considered a very important commodity. Well, they, that was the only way they could keep warm and cook things. Rav Chisda called Aklite Havi Mosul Shami. Gemara says Rav Chisda had a servant. All his keys that was necessary, he would give over to his servant. But one key he would not. He would not give it to him. Bar Nidit Sibe. The key that opened the, the um, storage for all the lumber, all the logs, whatever they needed in those days. Right. Uh, okay, let's go further. And they had enough, look at what the Gemara says, but 21 years, they had so much oil and whatever it was, uh, uh, wheat and barley and, and the logs and so on, they could sustain the entire population for 20 uh, for 21 years, right? Yeah. Um, um, Habi uh, oh, but what happened was, so really, they could have been, even though they're under siege, they, could just, they were able to sustain themselves, according to the Gemara, for 21 years. However, there was a group of people, the Zalats, we call it Biryonim, Biryonim, who opposed it. They felt it was wrong. What did, what, what did they feel? What was their opinion? The Sadducees and the Pharisees. Isn't this? No, no, it's nothing to do with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. No, we're talking about the Zealots. They call them in English as Zealots or Biryonim in Hebrew. They were Zealots. And they felt we shouldn't just sit back, sit back and do nothing. We should fight. Rather, fight and, 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 and then surrender. Or then just go and say we can sustain ourselves for 21 years and have these guys besiege the city. They, they were opposed to that. Let's fight and to fight like, uh, like men and, uh, and just sit here and do nothing. That was their opinion. Okay, and they were known as a biryonim. Habi, Mahu, Hanu, biryonim. There were certain, they call them the Zalats. And they, the Chum said to them, because their, their opinion was let's fight, fight to the end. Right? Nepuk, Minavich, Shlomo, Vatayu. But the Chacham said, no, no. Let's try to speak peace. Why should we go ahead and fight? If the Roman army is very powerful, have so many casualties, let's try to see if somehow we could talk peace, make some sort of a compromise with the Romans. Uh, and they, and the Biryonim, these uh, zealots, did not want that to happen. And they refused that. They refused that this whole approach of trying to make peace with the Romans. They were opposed to that. So the Zalat said, "No, let's go out and 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 and, and battle the Romans. Let's fight. Let's 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 have a war against them." So the Rabban says, "No, it's not a good idea to have a war against them. Romans tire mills. It's not." going to happen because they're too powerful. We can never overtake them. Um, <clears throat> so, but the Zealots were fanatics. And they said, Kalinu lahanu You know what they did? They actually burnt all the storage houses 
that to sustain the people, barley and wheat and who knows what else they burnt down, they had thin, hot, thin uh, hunger. Hunger began uh, in the city. The, in, they were saying, it was if we destroy all the food, they not, they have nothing to eat, then they'll open, then we could open the gates and have a war. That's what they're thinking. So uh, they destroyed everything. Okay, and, and, and because of that, a terrible hunger happened in, in, in neutral line. Okay. Let's see where are we now? Uh, okay. Now it was the head of the zealots, his name was Abba Sikra. Abba Sikra. Reish Baryoni Yushlaim. He was the head of this group of Biryonim, or what they call them Zalats. And he was related to Rabbi Yochanan Mitzak. He was the, one of the leading rabbis there. <coughs> he was Rabbi Yochanan's sister's son. The son of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai was a great leader. Okay, they were related. So Sholach Lei, so he sent a message. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai sent a message to Abba Sikra. Uh, Ta betzina legabai, I want you to come. Let's negotiate. Let's talk this over. Also, by Oh, Abba Sikra went over. Amale and Rabbi Yochanan said to him, How long are you going to continue this? I have no food. What do you want to kill everybody? You all die because they're hungry. A terrible hunger broke out over here. So Abba Sikra said, What do you want me to do? Am I, uh, am I, uh, what should I do? I might be a leader, but if I do, I could, I, I could, uh, if I do something other than what the, my my whole group of zealots want, they'll kill me. Me, I mean, I'll tell them anything. Cuddle it, they'll kill me. I'll say, let's make peace or whatever, whatever you want. On Malay, Chazli to Kantali did the April. Rabbi Yochanan and Zakhmer said, we have to find some way that I could get out of the city. Remember, once the Biryonim did what they did, they controlled the gates. They didn't let anybody out or nothing to come in. Okay, Ebsha, so he said to Rabbi Yochum and Zaka, I said, think of a way that I could somehow, I could leave the city of Yerushalayim. Ebsha, the Hamid Zohar What? Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's, that's right, that's going to happen that way. <coughs> Ebsha, maybe I'll be able to save something. This is crazy to go, to just sit here and do nothing. So but Abba Sikra said, I'll tell you what we do. Nikot Nafshel Mitzir, what to do is, let every let the word goes around. The word go around that you are very ill. You're very sick. The lazy call Amu Shailul Bachadim. Love to get Rabbi Yochum and Zakai, the greatest um, sage of the time. People are going to inquire what's going on. How bad? How is he doing? What's going on with Rabbi Yochum? The I say me the sorry every ugly boss. And then after a while, uh, we will will say that you passed away, and. Uh, we'll bring something uh, that will have a terrible smell, and we'll put it. We'll put you in the coffin with this horrible smell. Belimah the nachnav shechem will say to die. Belayla bach talmidoch and your talmidim will go with you, escorting you. And that's one thing. If somebody died, that's one thing that the zealots would, would permit. They would not have any that person remain in the city of Jerusalem. They'll permit that person to be be let out of the city where he could be buried. Okay. Okay, so everybody should know um, uh, that you, you've died, and we also have only this, only the your students will carry you the coffin because they'll know that's not true, but just to get you out of the city. Okay, uh, let me just skip a look. Yeah. Finally, um, um, they, they were able to get out of the city. <clears throat> now, I just want to finish this part up. He went out, he marked the loss, and Rabbi Yochum and Zakai was able to get into the Roman camp after they got him out of the city, got him out of the coffin, and he was able to meet Rabbi Yochum and Zakai. Obviously, Rabbi Yochum, since he was such a great man, Rabbi Yochum and Zakai, the Romans, the Romans heard about it. They knew who Rabbi Yochum and Zakai was. Uh, so, 
So when he got to the camp, Rabbi Yochum and Zakai said to Vespasian, Shlom Allah Malka, Shlom Allah Malka, peace be you, oh, oh king, call him the king twice. Uh, so Vespasian heard that and he knew who Rabbi Yochum and Zakai was. He says, You know something? You can be killed twice for what you just said. The love mal, first of all, I'm not the king. And I and now you're calling and you're calling me the king. And the second thing is, if I am a king, where were you, Rabbi Yochanan? I think that my love was the god boy. Why did you come here sooner? What took you so long? I'm, I'm I, we have a siege around the city for such a long period of time. Where were you? Why didn't he say yeah. something? Why didn't he say something with uh, with the blemish sacrifice? This is that's a different incident. This happened later on. That's that incident most probably was is past history. <laughs> this is this is it's a, this is Vespasian now. Yeah, it's, 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 they it's, see it, so it's, there was a rabbi that would have tried to do something. Maybe they yeah. just didn't. Well, have obviously, it. I don't know if Rabbi Yochum Mitzlach was there at that particular time when that incident happened. This is, this is a little later. This is getting really to the uh, to the year when the destruction of Beit Hamish will take place. That incident we talked about was what happened a few years before, most probably. It led to the destruction, but it, it was a few years before that. Ah, okay. So the Spasian said, you know, first of all, you should be killed twice. First of all, I'm not a king. I'm not a Caesar. And you know, to call me a Caesar when I'm not, that's that's a death penalty according to Roman law. And the other thing is, the second thing, why you should be killed, where were you, Rabbi Yochanan? What took you so long? It's been a year, it's so long, we're waiting to speak to you. Where were you? Okay. Rabbi Yochanan answers the following. To go on, Rabbi Yochanan, you tell me that you're not Caesar. I'm, I'm saying you are. Ibra Malkaat, truly you are the Caesar. And really, Rabbi Yochanan was right. He, he had that prophetic... Uh, Knowledge, as you soon see. The love Malka, because if you're not if you're not the Caesar, I want you to know, Lo Mimtro you will never be able to conquer the city of Jerusalem because it says explicitly in the verse of Yeshaya, Albanon, Adili Pol Labanon, which is another name for the Beit Hamikdash, will fall into the hands of a great person. And Adir is a is a Caesar, is a king. <laughs> okay, so I know if you are it's gonna fall into your hands. But so you definitely have to be Caesar. So verse says so. And because uh, it, <laughs> it says the verse the same the verse is Bahalabonon, the Lebanon will fall into a powerful person. Now Lebanon, it doesn't mean the Lebanon that we know, but the Lebanon is another name for what? It's a nickname for the Holy Temple. And why is it called the Lebanon? Because of Lavan. It yeah, cleanses white. white. It cleanses everyone. If some a transgress, somebody transgress something, and you want to seek atonement for his transgression, you would bring a a uh, korban, and it'll be cleansed. Lavon comes to Lavon to cleanse. Okay. So in this case, it said in Isaiah prophesied that the Lebanon, the Beit Hamikdash, will fall in the hands of a mighty Caesar, of somebody who's very powerful. Okay. And then he said. And which and Rabbi Yochanan continued said and and you say, you told you told me that uh, if you if you are you, so you, you asked me if, if I am the Caesar why didn't I come earlier I have the answer for that also Biryoni is lo shakinon it was the whole group of people which I'm known as the Zalat they refused to have they didn't want to to negotiate. I wanted to negotiate. I couldn't get out. So it took me a long time before we found a way of getting me out. Okay. Okay, but then the, let's just finish this part off. Um, uh, let's just finish this. But it, it does say more than it can it concludes that at that time, right after that time, there was a a, a marathon. A marathon, a long distance runner. Uh, uh, who, who came into the, to the camp, the Roman camp, and told, uh, um, what's his name, uh, uh, Vespasian, you should know the Caesar in Rome has died, and the Senate has appointed you as Caesar, and you'll have to go back to Rome. So we'll, uh, maybe next week we'll, we'll continue on this. Um, remember this, uh, Tisha B'Av is this Sunday, or Saturday night, 
uh, it's a long day. And, and uh, hope everyone has an easy fast. And let's hope, as the, uh, as the end of the Kino says, that we would look for the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the restoration of this third and final holy temple that had happened in our times. Amen, have, amen. Our, have a, my main, right? And have Shabbat Shalom. All of you should have a wonderful Shabbat. And Mietz Hashem will continue this next week and see what happens. Okay, Shabbat One question. Rabbi, yeah. one question, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you. yeah okay. Why right. was the question? When, when it comes to Bar comes to, uh, you said you don't have any recollection of that, but I remember many, many years ago, I heard once a share suggesting that there was some relation between the two. It may not have been father and son, but, but some relation. I, I never saw that, but you might be right. Okay. I, I don't I know. I mean, I just some, saw I did see this. Some say that's not his, that's not their names. They had different names. Oh. This is calling, that is called oh. comfortable concept. It's really, oh, that's okay. just like a nickname. It wasn't really their names. Oh, all right. That's what I saw too. Yes, so. okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Easy fast, everybody. Thank you, Rabbi. Okay. Shabbat shalom. Meaningful fast. Thank you. 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 Thank